Hello everyone. My name is Arvind Raman. I lead the Service Experience Transformation Practice at Infosys, responsible for the ServiceNow business. Today I have with me a very distinguished gentleman, Vijay Narayanan. Vijay is the first ever Chief AI Officer at ServiceNow. Prior to ServiceNow, he was with Pinterest and Microsoft. He also holds an engineering degree from IIT Madras and a PhD from the Ohio State University in one of my favorite topics of work, which is astronomy. But that's a conversation for another time. For today, we'll talk about artificial intelligence, that's AI and automation, and the play of these two very important forces in the world around us. So Vijay, a very warm welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you, Arvind. It's a great pleasure to join you and the team today. Um, very exciting, as you mentioned. I've been here at ServiceNow for a little over eight months, and I'm very excited by uh, how I believe we can bring finally the value of machine learning and AI, all the exciting progress and innovations that have happened in the last uh, eight to ten years uh, into enterprises, especially uh, for enterprise use cases. Uh, purpose-built natively in the ServiceNow platform. So I'm very excited to join you here today and uh, uh, look forward to the conversation. Given this digital disruption that is happening across industries, across all enterprises, how do you and the advanced technology group at ServiceNow that you're leading, how do you see the play of AI uh, permeating across enterprises? What's the impact of these across enterprises now? Great question, Arvind. Um, if I look at uh, what uh, um, our uh, our enterprise customers and partners are going through today, um, suddenly the way that the uh, 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 the way that uh, enterprises today support their employees, the way that they support and service their customers, the whole models are are, are being disrupted, right? Uh, the way, for instance, how uh, if uh, as, a, as a CIO or, or, or the C-suite is looking at how do they enable their employees to work productively? How do they make sure, and, and not just productively, but productively anywhere, right? Um, outside of the traditional office environment. So whether uh, you are in the business, I mean, whether you are looking at how do you keep your employees uh, productive wherever they are, whether you look at uh, how do you better serve your customers wherever uh, they are and whatever they are going through and still retain that high level of customer satisfaction. C-Suite today is really facing a, facing a, a huge challenge, right? One is um, I'm no longer in this model that I had optimized for earlier, right? Till about a year ago where people are in offices, you bring them tools, you give them training, they see a set of experiences uh, in the office suddenly that's all changing. So how do you make sure your employees today are productive wherever they are? Can you, what are the new types of uh, challenges that they face? For instance, people are working from home. Suddenly the types of VPN issues and the types of things that, uh, that an enterprise needs to make sure are very robust and automated and people have good experiences with remote connectivity, with the tools they use for collaboration, with the, with the types of, um, uh, with the types of, uh, how you have you have you run meetings right the 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 experiences that the employees have are drastically changing so employers today are really struggling to figure out how do you ensure your employees get very productive very quick here is where i believe ai really really has an advantage right because take a simple example um say now i have an issue with say vpn or or even zoom earlier i would walk up to a to an it help desk and somebody would help me today the customer, the employees don't have that uh, that luxury, right? I can't walk up to my to my colleague in the service desk to get those experiences. Uh, similarly, the service providers, right? On the other end, the help desk doesn't have access to my things very quickly. AI really helps you with two things, right? One, driving automation, right? So a lot of repetitive types of use cases. How many of us have been told, hey, VPN issues go restart something or go research your access something here is or here is a new key go uh, reset the key using these five steps and you can get it up and going so the types that you can automate using self-serve 
types that you can automate using uh, automated resolution are now a lot, lot different from what you used to do earlier. So AI can really help you with this level of automation, right? extremely with this level of automation. Secondly, what it does is, it also helps you a lot with uh, with uh, with agility, right? So, how many or how many IT uh, departments had to face with a lot of Zoom issues earlier? Right now, Zoom issues are large fraction of what some of these uh, these IT service departments are facing. But when an AI can observe how the agent is resolving these issues, what are the root causes, and observe from the domain experts, the agents, how it's being resolved, AI helps you automate and transfer those types of things, learns what is the resolution, and you can now automatically start scaling it across multiple similar uh, problems that, uh, that other employees face. So overall, uh, both through automation as well as through increased agility, I think AI is going to have a very long-lasting value in this whole service management space. We've seen in the last few years the movement, all the predictive routing, virtual chatbot, what you talked about, the personalized ability to not just provide us a standard answer but a very personalized response so that's almost now a, an expectation that is there in the IT world but more interestingly you also talked about a very awesome example of how this has become an expectation in the customer experience how can it be uh, the same level of intelligence how can the, that be brought into the the true business of an organization into the experiences not just for the IT, but for the employees, for the end customers of the organization. So that's been a that's been an awesome level of change that has happened over the last uh, uh, last year, a couple of years or so. And from ServiceNow's perspective, I can share that some of the capabilities which are out there in the product now, a few years ago, I wouldn't have thought those are capabilities that would get into a product as a standard offering. So as part of some of the work that we've been doing at Infosys, as part of the Infosys Cobalt framework, uh, we've done some great work on ServiceNow, specifically around building the Enterprise Service Management Cafe, which houses a repository of all the configurations that we've done for best practices that we've done for customers worldwide. Uh, there are a lot of capabilities that we have built around AI and automation uh, that have got built into this, that are provided to our customers, that have helped our customers to uh, get their digital transformation accelerated much more. As AI moves from the core IT to the to the beyond IT space, how do you see that kind of a transition or is it a very natural evolution that you're seeing? Are there certain areas that are more amiable to getting automated? What's your thought on those? IT is just one part of the overall employee experience, right? But there are a lot of other experiences that an employee has as they interact with the with the with the enterprise. Whether it's uh, their HR experiences, their experiences with the different uh, business functions, right? Like whether it's uh, dealing with finance or legal, or uh, as you are as you go through your employment with uh, 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 with an enterprise. There's a set of different experiences that an employee goes through their journey, right? Even things like training, learning, uh, and similarly for the enterprise itself to understand things like, hey, what is the employee sentiment around this, right? Especially in this period, uh, uh, the uh, businesses and the C-suite are really interested in, hey, what are our employees? Uh, uh, what is the sentiment, right? What are they finding working for them? Where is the stress? What are uh, some things we can do? And are these things being effective? All those types of things. So AI is get, getting a lot, lot more uh, uh, ubiquitous and starting to permeate all of the experiences that employees have with the in their in their day to day work. Uh, and similarly, uh, it's, it's also permeating a lot in how the enterprise and the employees within the enterprise serve their customers as well, right? whether it's in uh, uh, assisting folks like customer service agents get better service, whether it's even driving more self-service uh, for the customers. So things like self-service, automated resolutions, better assistance for uh, uh, what we broadly call as fulfillers. These, this could be anything from agents. It could also be people approving things, right? I'm sure Arvind, you have a lot of things where different people are asking for various things and you need to figure out how to approve uh, things. Even uh, business processes like uh, um, order processing, invoice processing in various industries. All those pieces, I believe, are now 
uh, uh, getting more and more automated and uh, the experiences are getting a lot more mature with AI. Now, the one thing about AI is it's a learning system, right? Things take some time to settle in, to learn. But the more that we see the those uh, companies who are already leveraging AI, who are a little bit farther ahead in their AI journey, are starting to now observe a lot more returns in their, in their earlier investments. Because these things, the, the value of AI increases over time as it understands the data more and more, as it settles into the environment, observes the behavior, how people are interacting with it, and then it starts optimizing for, for the overall experiences. So we are seeing uh, uh, more and more in the last uh, uh, two, three years, I think our own journey in ServiceNow started about four years ago, uh, four, five years ago by now, where we have uh, we've taken the service experiences things to not just IT, but a lot more of the holistic employee experience and the holistic customer experiences. And going forward uh, into even things like um, uh, citizen developer experiences, right, where people can build apps, uh, even intelligent apps very easily for what they're trying to do to automate parts of their day-to-day -day work. We have been making a lot of investments in AI in the last uh, four years. Um, uh, 2017 was the first time that uh, ServiceNow started investing in AI and we have been continuously increasing our investments uh, uh, over the last years. You might have observed that we made a lot of acquisitions in the past and uh, just in uh, December, we announced and in January we actually closed the uh, largest uh, acquisition of in service now history, which is an AI company called Element AI. Uh, and the goal here is to really bring those powerful AI capabilities and continue to build those AI capabilities natively in the platform that you that then power anywhere that uh, uh, I mean all the all the different employees and the customer experiences that we are enabling through the platform, right? To really optimize and, uh, and, and build purpose-built AI natively into the platform to enable those holistic experiences across the enterprise, whether it's for employees or for customers. Yep, great point. Actually, when you mentioned 2017, I recollected and I went back uh, uh, remembering that was exactly the year when we at uh, Enforces we had our first deployment of uh, AI capabilities on the ITSM platform using ServiceNow. And it was fairly a big one for the customer and we started to see the results probably within about a quarter or two uh, actual differences in the kind of routing, the level of uh, the first information that a fulfiller gets, the kind of knowledge articles, the relevancy of those knowledge articles, uh, the ability to route them to the right groups the first time itself. And the conversations are now moving to the next level. So it's awesome to see this level of progression, This the acceleration of this movement uh, has been tremendous in the last uh, three or four years. So Vijay, that, that kind of brings me to a very a larger question outside of the enterprises as we, as we see this play of AI, especially given what is happening out there in society right now, not just from our customers, but a larger society. What's the role of AI that you see globally? For how does it impact us as, as individuals, as members of the society any thoughts on that i believe that ai is becoming a lot lot more ubiquitous uh, and will continue to become more ubiquitous uh, uh, in every sphere of uh, our lives right both professional and personal uh, lives and how we experience things uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Simple things in the consumer space, obviously, we are all used to now taking things like being able to search for information for granted, being able to uh, form social relationships, get good recommendations of content in areas like Netflix, for entertainment, etc. So those have been, have made a lot of progress in the last eight to 10 years, leveraging AI, and those have been in a sense at the forefront of leveraging this. But, what I see happening in the last two, three years, and uh, I'm very optimistic that we'll gather more speed uh, in the next three to five years, is in areas like healthcare, um, areas like uh, manufacturing, um, areas like even education, um, where the, the uh, uh, types of experiences, the, our ability to drive breakthroughs in those areas, new discoveries, 
new um, new uh, drugs, for instance, right? We are starting to get to the point where, in fact, COVID uh, actually accelerated this. The ability to even understand a lot of uh, medical journals that very rapidly, being able to process that information, being able to identify potential drug candidates, right? Whereas what earlier used to take multiple years to come up with a few candidates and a few of the, and even fewer of them become viable. As a society, we are being forced to uh, uh, accelerate these processes, right? And we are seeing AI getting permeated in a lot of these things. Are they perfect today? No, by, by there are still a long ways to go. But is the progress and the rate of progress rapid? Absolutely, that I see huge things even today that I probably wouldn't have imagined three, four years ago. Um, I was reading recently, even in uh, areas like um, uh, discovering planets, right? Uh, people are using AI now to discover planets. AI is being obviously uh, used in a number of industries. So the types of uh, uh, potential areas where AI becomes useful is just new things are coming up every day. And I expect this to be almost as transformative AI to be almost as transformative to our human uh, experience as probably computing itself was uh, maybe 40, 50 years ago. Uh, but given the pace at which things are going, I don't think it will be 40 years. Uh, so, but hopefully in the next 10 to 20, I think they'll be in a very drastic situation. I couldn't help but smile when you brought up the example of uh, discovery of uh, exoplanets and so on. I think it's the it's just mind blowing to see the level of uh, uh, where this is going as a as as a not just as a technology but as capability that that will permeate across all the work that we do. So as part of this journey, it's been a great partnership with ServiceNow that we've seen. Uh, we've also had examples of collaboration in the vertical space. Uh, the complaints management solution is a great example of how end customers are reaching out to banks as an example to talk about the different uh, issues or grievances that they have and how AI is enabling the prioritization grouping and the right level of uh, attention to the right level of issues that are coming from the end customers. Thank you again so much for this awesome conversation. Wonderful to speak with you. Thank you, Erwin. Greatly appreciate this and greatly look forward to our next conversation as well. Thank you.